Player One, give me category. Open wide and get ready for... That's gross. $2,000 says you don't know this one. Okay, for this question, I want you to... Uh, hey, Cookie. Come on, I'm doing the show. Oh, I, got, I got your paycheck. Oh. Oh, thanks, Ray. I thought we were supposed to get direct deposit. I don't trust that stuff. Man, can you believe the taxes they take out? You know, if we got paid more often than every other week, we'd end up making more money. Really? Sure, more frequent paydays, smaller paychecks, smaller percentage of your taxes taken out, bigger net pay. So it'd be like getting a raise, huh? Okay, folks, try this. Under which pay period would I receive my paycheck most frequently? Diurnally, semi-diurnally, bi-weekly, or semi-weekly? <laughs> Nope, diurnally means once a day. Like the vitamins. Like the vitamins, yes. Layer one, it's yours if you want it. Layer one. Go ahead, tell them. Um, semi... -di S semi diurnal. Yeah, is half a day or every 12 hours. Well, thanks for bringing my check, Ray. I, I gotta finish up now. Sure. Uh, so that's all you do is read this stuff? Oh, pretty much, yeah. How much they pay you? Get out of my booth, man. Get out. Monkeys I work with. Moving on. Let's have a category, player one. Say hello to... It's a dog! It's a game for old people! Wait, it's both! And you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Remember that song about the farmer and his dog? Well, let's change the subject of the song and you tell me the next lyric. <clears throat> okay, I haven't done this in a while. There was a nationalist who was really arrogant. What is the best choice for the next lyric? And Dingo was his name-o, and Jingo was his name-o, and Stingo was his name-o, or... And Frango was his name-o. Now, if Frango was his name-o, he'd be a nationalist with a nice minty taste. Balls in your court, player. Player. Bingo! A jingo is one who practices jingoism, which is a really arrogant form of nationalism or patriotism. <laughs> and jingo was my favorite beetle, too. Category time. Player two, it's your call. Let's see what we got going. Middle American Indian. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Let's rock. Which of these icons of suburbia is also the name of a Native American tribe? The Winnebago in the driveway, the Flamingo in the front yard, the Hibachi on the back porch, or the Barca Lounger in the living room? Layer 2. The Winnebago tribe now lives in parts of Wisconsin and Nebraska. And I'm sure the tribe and the motorhome company are thrilled that their name is now associated with fat old beer guzzlers. Your pick, player two, how about it? You can't stop at three, no, you gotta head four, yeah! May I introduce Raves Hats and the Next Day's Cleanup? Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. All right, listen up. You're making a kid's version of the classic anti pollution commercial featuring the crying Native American. Since this is for kids, you replace the Native American with a Dr. Seuss character. Based on his past experience with anti pollution messages, which Dr. Seuss character would be the best replacement for the crying Native American? Sam I Am, the Lorax, a Sneech, or Horton? All yours, player one. The Lorax was a little yellow guy who tried to warn us about the dangers of pollution. <laughs> How do you think those eggs and ham got green in the first place? Player one, anti up. Let's blow this time and head for number five. Now serving. Sorry, I can't bathe today. I've got a date. This one's worth a grand. Okay, listen up. Let's say you've decided to take a new approach to personal hygiene. 
Say you reserve the first Tuesday following the first Monday of each month for your monthly bath. If it's November, for what might you forgo bathing? Columbus Day, the general election, NBA opening day, or Thanksgiving. Layer 2, great. Oh, God, baby, I diss you so much. Layer 1, what do you say? Layer The first Tuesday after a Monday in November is election day. And for my sake, I suggest you vote by mail. Layer 1, tell me what's happening. For your enjoyment, you look absolutely emollient. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. If you were to smooth ponds on your ponds, what would you have? A luxuriously silky stomach, kissably soft feet, creamy sensuous vocal cords, or a sinfully smooth brain stem? Feet. No, that's if you put ponds on your pods. Player one, you can take it. Player the pawns is a part of the brainstem. And if you want people to love you for your brain, the least you can do is keep it looking good. Player one, hit me with the category. Seven lucky luck. This one likes to go by. Don't know much symbiology. How does two thousand dollars sound? Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. If the bionic man and bionic woman enjoyed a symbiotic relationship, what would you probably see them do? He'd use her ear, she'd use his eye, they'd communicate via biopsychic vibes, they'd become one twelve million dollar organism, or he'd play with the dog, she'd fight crime. Player two. When two organisms live in symbiosis, it means that each of their existences benefits the other. <laughs> Although for six million bucks, don't you think they could throw in the extra eye and ear? Or is Oscar Goldman really that much of a skin flint? Player two, take your pick. Uh-oh, blah, 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 blah. One gibberish category coming up. I got a pair just like that at home. How about $5,000 to start this gibberish question? Now check it out. As the time disappears, so does the money. So the sooner you buzz in, the better. Now, if you would be so kind, tell me what this rhymes with. Darn wool be thin socks. First hint, it's a time of year. Nighttime. It's a time of year that marks the beginning of spring. Last hint. Hey, Ver. Go for it, player two. Type in your answer. For some people, the beginning of spring is a very holy time, and particularly if they're wearing thin socks. Your turn, player two. What's it going to be? Aloha, question number nine. Coming at you, still better than air supply. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Okay, imagine this group of pop singers got together to form one band. Since their names are all common to a different well-known group of people, what might singers Billy Joel, Tori Amos, Marky Mark, and Olivia Newton-John call their band? Grand Funk, Child Actors, Nude Magazine, Kids on the Block, The Guess Who Went to Juilliard, or Bible Book Revival? Take a sh- Juilliard. Y- you heard me say Marky Mark, right? Player one, what do you say? All y- Their names are prominently featured in the Bible. The books of John and Mark are in the New Testament, and books Joel and Amos are in the Old. <laughs> Further proof that some pop singers have sold their soul to the devil. Player one, your choice. What are we doing? 
Hey, great choice, sweetie. I've been waiting for this since we got going, because this one's a three-way. Okay, listen up. This is pretty simple. You're going to see a three-way like this one. Go for your buzzer when you see the correct three-way member lit up. If it's the right match, you'll score. But look out, it'll cost you a grand every time you're wrong. But don't be misled, this question may or may not have anything to do with the three-way as a group. All right, time to boogie. The category for this three-way is... Ooh, baby, I'm on fire. No, really. And this three-way is going to be about the three words of wisdom. Stop, drop, and roll. All righty, watch your buzzer. Here we go. Oh yes! Hey. Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! That's all we got. Now, let's see how you did. Well, player two, it wasn't the sun and the moon, but I wouldn't kick you out of bed for that performance. Not that I'm very picky. Uh, so, let's check out the overall scores. Well, player one, it looks like you're still strutting your stuff in the lead there. Nice job. And now we return to our regularly scheduled program. That's it for round one. Let's go to round two. First, I need to hand out some screws. Hmm, might have to use brass clips again. No, wait, here we go. One more thing, don't be afraid of those screws. You got them for a reason. If you want to force your partner there to answering the question, just buzz in, slap the S key, got it? Now get in there and screw with abandon. You have the honors, player two. This category is known as Very Special Episodes Teach Us the Darndest Things. $2,000 says you don't know this one. You know what time it is? It's time to reminisce about one of the Brady Bunch's greatest episodes. In the episode where the Brady family races across King's Island to get Mr. Brady his blueprints, which of these best resembles the method they use? Paul Revere's ride, the running of the bulls, the Pony Express, or the Cannonball Run? Ooh, ouch. Layer 2. As they race across the park, each Brady or Alice passes the tube on to the next refreshed Brady, much in the way ponies were traded to deliver mail in the Old West. <laughs> and with the ground Alice was clearing, you'd think Sam was on the other end waiting with his, uh, meat. Hmm, I wonder what Player 2 is going to pick. The category, torn between two lovers. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Let's see how you handle this one. Say you're King Minus of Greek mythology and you're jealous of your wife's past infidelity. If you want to keep her from being tempted again, to which sporting event should you not take her? A professional wrestling match, a greyhound race, a monster truck rally, or a rodeo? King Minus' wife had sex with a bull and gave birth to the Minotaur. (laughs) And no matter how much she insists she wants to go to the rodeo just to watch, don't believe her. Player one, it's up to you. What's next? Shake hands with. I think you need a special jack for that. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Put your tray in the upright position, it's time for takeoff. Which of the following could you hook up to your computer that would not be another kind of monitor? A Civil War battleship, a Komodo dragon, a mythical bovine animal, or a grade school hall sentry? Layer 1? Nope, the monitor fought the Merrimack in the famous Civil War naval battle. You sunk your battleship. Layer 2 
The Komodo dragon is one of a group of lizards known as monitors, but you probably get tired of that big tongue smacking you in the face while you surf the net. <laughs> Mythical bovine animal? Hmm, let's see, that would be a, a, a minotaur, wouldn't it? Hello, been to any good rodeos lately? Player two, give me something. Pucker up for Marianne's Island. Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If Marianne from Gilligan's Island became a firm believer in Marianismo, with which of the following statements would she most likely agree? The castaways are like puppets on a string, the skipper should get the top bunk, Mrs. Howell is morally superior to Thurston, or Ginger needs to floss after meals. Nice guess, Pinocchio, but that'd be if Marianne believed in marionettes. Player one, it's yours if you want it. Let's take a look at the right answer. Although men boast about their machismo, the theory of Marianismo claims the feminine spirit is stronger and morally superior. Now that's how Marianne finally got him to say her name during the opening credits, instead of just, and the rest. Category time, player two, it's your call. Not fourteen, not sixteen, you're right in between. This little number's known as Fatal Subtraction. Four thousand big ones for a right answer here. You know the old saying, close only counts in horseshoes hugging and hand grenades? Well, based on her resume, you could say Glenn Close only counts in which of these films? Heartburn, Husbands and Wives, Hamlet, or Hooper? For the curious, here's the right answer. Ah! The only one of these movies that Glenn Close appears in is Hamlet playing Mel Gibson's mother. Given their nine-year age difference, that must have been a pretty difficult childbirth. <laughs> Player two, take your pick. All right, player two, you made the right choice, because it's time for you and only you to play this or that. The category for this dis or dad is... Wait, this isn't spaghetti, it's worms! Okay, for each of these seven words, you tell me, is it a type of pasta or parasite? Now, if it's a tasty pasta, press one. If it's a parasite, press two. And if you want to skip one, press four. Each correct answer will net you 1,000 bucks. And you lose 1,000 if you get it wrong or if you don't get to it at all. All right, I'll start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. And we're off. Macaroni pie. Rotini. Trigonella. Linguini. Spirochete. Salmonella. Last one. That's all she wrote. Oh, yes, you rock. Check it out. Now that's what you want to see. Now let's see what else we got going. Let's have a category player one. On the big bayou in Louisiana, crest on 17. Okay, give it up for 12 inches of wax. How does $4,000 grab you? Put it in gear, because here we go. Say record producers Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis got a hold of the first sound recording and mixed it into something the kids will go crazy for. What would be the name of this new dance track? Declaration of Disco Independence, Mary Had a Little Lamb Cylinder Mix, Baby Got Bach, or Watson, I Need You, Radio Edit. Layer 2. The first sound recording was Thomas Edison reciting Mary Had a Little Lamb. But in the remix, when the little lamb follows her to school, Mary asks what it's done for lately. Your turn, player two. What's it gonna be? And 
And I believe this one's called, This Question Makes Wide Right Turns. Better wake up, there's 6000 bucks at stake. Hey, it's moving day, and you're moving to Burma. If you try to rent a trailer from the ooh hall you find in the Burma phone book, who might end up helping you with your move? Are you an ambassador, a priest, a martial arts student, or some guy named Hall? No, but you know, a priest in a moving van sounds like a good plot for a Burt Reynolds movie. Player one, you can take it. Should have picked this. In Burma, the word you is used as a salutation of respect before a man's name, so Ooh Hall would be some guy named Hall. After he's done helping you move, you can take him to one of those all ooh can eat places. He'll dig that. Hmm, I wonder what player two's gonna pick. Say hello to what to get the woman who can demand everything. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. Say you're planning to send a lovely birthday bouquet to your good friend, the Greek goddess Nemozani. Given her domain, what would be the most appropriate flowers to send? Forget-me-nots, black-eyed Susans, ladies' slippers, or baby's breath? Nemozani was the goddess of memory. So send her forget-me-nots. Just make sure they get to her in time for her birthday or you'll look like a real jerk. Layer one, gimme category. Here we have, I'll be there with bells on. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Listen up, folks. No, I mean, pay attention here. This is important. Our microphones are on location to record a momentous event in American history. Let her rip, fellas. Oh, jeez, you busted it. Hey, anybody want to go get a cheesesteak? Where am I? Take a shot, player two. That sound you heard was the Liberty Bell cracking in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, let me digest that cheesesteak sandwich a bit longer. You'll hear something else crack. Your pick, player two. How about it? Everyone comfy? Too bad. You're about to have an attack. Hang on to this clue. What are you, little furry thing? Uh, I'm not gonna touch that one. I mean, I'm not gonna go into that one. Wait, never mind. <clears throat> Good luck. Stop. It's player two! 
player, too. That was a close call. Now, why don't you call someone who cares and tell them, 